Hey what is going on guys, MODC Architecture here, aka Matt Cooper, and welcome back to another video. Now I've been a bit on a I've been on a bit of a hiatus uh, recently, and that's a uh, large part due to the amount of work I've had to do for the Architectural Association. However, things are now calming down so I will be back to doing videos. Uh, thank you so much for the support on all the videos as well. The views are, are you know, shooting up. I never thought I'd be able to get a, a video over 100. Now I've got a couple. And um, yeah, thank you so much for all the support as well and all the comments. Uh, I try to reply to every comment. Um, and I love hearing all your stories as well. And um, all your stories of getting into architecture, universities, and uh, how you got there. So yeah, keep sending those in. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the video. So, so the video I'm going to be doing today is just reading out my jury to presentation just to show sort of what a presentation entails um, and uh, then you can sort of see what sort of drawings that I have in it and um, hopefully it will just help you out with your um, crits uh, later down the line. So, the Renewable Theme Park. My project proposal provides a setting for experiential learning for amusement park enthusiasts. The predominant method of education is through reducing the vertical theme park's carbon footprint by manipulating environmental conditions to generate sustainable power from the wind. The project aims to fill a void in the Nine Elms region's current programmatic context through the addition of an entertainment, educational and uh, sustainable public space. I selected Battersea Power Station as my site. Battersea has a rich history which ranges from being a reservoir in 1870 through to the power station from the 30s where it only had Station A to the 50s where both stations were in place, and finally after its closure in the 80s, starting in 2012, the plans for its current development in association with the development in Nine Elms. The study of the history of the site opened up investigation into the potential uses for the site. Despite the current redevelopment, there were many proposals which were planned to go ahead. Uh, for example, in, the 19, in 1983, a theme park was proposed. In 1993, a park view area was proposed, and even a football stadium in 2012. Currently, they're developing a retail park to go with the current program in the surrounding context, uh, which consists of healthcare, residential, office and park spaces. However, hotel and market spaces are under development too. From this, I noticed there was a lack of entertainment in the area, so I wanted to research into London and look at theme parks. Apart from Winter Wonderland, which is temporary, there are no entertainment facilities manifesting in a theme park uh, typology across the capital. Entertainment parks get millions of visitors and generate billions of dollars in revenue per year, and these are the statistics from 2019. And after noticing there are considerably larger parks elsewhere in the world, I wanted to explore the entertainment parks in England. I explored the site and photographed the chimneys, which are grade 2 listed, so must be protected or restored dependent on their condition. And from the construction, I was not able to see the travel routes uh, to the site as well. However, I researched into it and saw the potential for train, vehicle, pedestrian and even boating access to the site. Battersea was once considered one of the tallest areas in London, however it has since fallen behind with London reaching over 300 metres with the Shard. I see this project as an opportunity to uh, res or reinstate uh, the site as a powerful area um, as it was once known when, the ba ba when uh, Battersea Power Station was initially built. The initial site research and my current site interests uh, led me to my programmatic idea of a vertical theme park that educates about and generates sustainable power. I am proposing this idea of a vertical theme park because currently England only has amusement parks. I have defined a difference between the two, amusement parks being purely for those thrill seekers, whereas theme parks use um, more experiential techniques to engage and entertain its, vi its visitors. In relation to education, I believe there's a difference between being educated and actively learning. Through research, it is my understanding that entertainment is one of the best forms of learning, for example, learning through play, which this uh, image demonstrates. When, I applied, when applied to sustainability, I believe actively learning is important. Currently, worldwide, too much CO2 is being produced. Focusing on England, London is a large contributor to England's carbon output of 30.3 million tonnes a year. However, London has an ambitious plan to go carbon zero by 2050, and I would like my town to contribute to that through actively learning. In relation to sustainability, parks are very wasteful in terms of water and emit a lot of pollution into the air and through excess waste and uh, the clearing of natural habitats. An example of this is Skyrise Miami Tower, which is built on an artificial island as an extension of the Miami coast. This is an interesting precedent for me as it's one of the new sort of proposed and it's one of the few and only um, proposed vertical theme parks being built currently. However, theme parks are getting better in general at being more sustainable, albeit the horizontal ones, by reducing paper, using solar farms to power the parks, and having disposable waste when they can. 
Masses of renewable power is produced per year. For this town to be educational and effective, I have to understand them further. And through research, I understood that there's a potential for many different forms of sustainable energy win um, sustainable energy production around Battersea, which include wind energy, solar energy, and predominantly hydroelectric energy. With the theme park and sustainable energy programs um, in mind, I developed my initial sketches and was inspired by this idea of restarting Battersea Power Station's hypothetical engine, hence the piston-style design you see on the right. And uh, I took this as an opportunity to look at mo the moving parts of the renewable energy sources and relate them to rides from a theme park. The underlying theme of this initial design progression is this idea of movement, which was developed in 2D and further into 3D families on site. However, I disliked the look of the design, but kept the mind of um, kept in mind this idea of movement uh, from our, from the architectural to the human scale. I wanted to make these large architectural movements initially by potentially raising a section of the building, as uh, shown here. But ultimately, understood that this wasn't a viable uh, solution and refocused on movement on a more human scale. Initially, starting with the theme park, it is important to convey within a tower typology the open nature of a theme park but to convey an educational message about humans in the environment, hence the study of these two precedents, which allowed me to focus my message of sustainability, where I go through this sort of idea of a presentation, I suppose, on what uh, sustainability is and how humans um, affect the environment, uh, and then turn this into a series of lands where I storyboarded a typical journey throughout my tower, which I then related to a main ride within each land, um, and then I moved on to the human experiences. I wanted to make sure the tower could react to people and almost feel as if it were alive. So I started investigating into how I could move space as a reaction to circulation, both moving the exterior and moving the interior. The interior would react to you walking forward and allow you to go through fanning as you circulate. So it's sort of as you walk, it opens up in front of you. After all my research, I compiled everything and created some representations of what I wanted in each land and named those lands too. The idea behind the lands is to tell a story of how humans have affected the past environments by demonstrating its present condition and how it could recover in the future use, uh, through the use of uh, renewable technology. And then started to stack them in a vertical manner as I need to sort of design this tower. Uh, I allowed for my mass to take a form to take form over the programmatic functions, which I knew was a mistake, but it implemented it allowed me to implement uh, sustainable power techniques into the design. And this idea of a, a moving facade and having these opening elements for circulation and exploring the atmosphere around these movable elements too. And having the different rides and showing the atmosphere of the spaces in question too. Uh, as I previously mentioned, I allowed the building shape to dictate the programmatic placement. However, I, want, I wanted to rectify this decision. I decided on the, on the uh, main renewable power source of my tower to be from uh, the wind generator on the site. So with this came the need to develop um, a more parametric design through a catalog stage um, of sort of through cataloging the stages of development, uh, which led me to looking at precedent studies and playing with the idea of having a ride system connected to the environmental conditions. However, upon further development, I realised I didn't want this in my design, as the situation showed that I would need to use some fluid dynamics to speed up the wind uh, enough to make the wind power um, a viable source of uh, energy generation for my tower. Therefore, I did a more detailed wind study and developed uh, a shape based on direction and height to come to an overall shape in the bottom right uh, that would allow me to theoretically have the most effective wind design on my site. With the use of the Venturi effect, uh, I came up with this pipe design, which could be uh, which cut into a cuboid on site. However, architecturally, the pipes were very similar in size, and uh, the shape didn't really communicate this idea of movement. Therefore, I started cataloging different types of wind tunnels, having them move in the X, X and Y, and X, Y and Z directions, and finally having a variation at the bottom um, to vary the size of the entry point of the wind and the exit point of the wind to make um, the Venturi effect a little bit more efficient. And I did this for one, two and uh, three tunnel designs that converged into one opening at the other side of the tower. And from this I selected a variation of um, different sort of forms that uh, I discovered through the, that cataloging um, and then labelled them and then used this to inform the massing of the, the design as I did previously. And then showing the potential efficiency I wanted to use, I want to use AutoCAD CFD to do a proper analysis on this but haven't had the chance yet. With the enclosure shape based on the idea of harnessing the wind's energy and tunnels uh, cutting into the building's mass, 
I re-looked at the theme park program of the tower, specifically deciding where the rides would go, which in turn allowed me to decide where my theme park lands uh, would go to. The first attraction I'd like to focus on is a theatre ride where passengers load on the floor and then are risen in the air and then ride and then when riding in uh, the ride it gives you this feeling of flying um, it's situated in uh, future land uh, it's situated in this section of the building and has these floor plates surrounding the ride modules which will uh, be there too the second iterate or the second attraction would be uh, I would like to show is uh, the theatre space where I envisage performance or talks being presented regarding sustainability it's situated in this section of the building as a presentation space to what the building is all about as the tower meets the ground and this shows the elements around the space. The third attraction is a launch coaster to accommodate the thrill seekers uh, looking to come to this uh, tower and it's situated in present land. It's situated just outside of the theatre space and the most accessible ride to the public um, as based on my personal experiences with theme parks um, the the um, the launch coaster is most likely to be the most popular ride in the tower, and this is the view of the elements surrounding it. The fourth attraction is a track ride present uh, in present land, uh, and it's situated here in the tower and has these elements surrounding it. The fifth attraction is a boat ride located in future land, again in this uh, area of the building, with these elements surrounding it. The sixth iteration is uh, one in the chimney stacks, and it's a drop tower which uh, features in renewable land. It is situated in the front right hand chimney um, and during the ride people will be able to see views of central London, the South Bank and the Thames uh, while riding it. Sort of inspired by inspired by uh, the Hollywood Tower of Terror um, at Disney World Florida in Hollywood Studios if you've ever been on it. Um, it's, a, it's a great ride so I'm hoping this would be a great ride as well uh, and also has the and um, is here is uh, where it's situated um, and these elements are surrounding it. So as a final section, I just wanted to show this as the final viewpoint to demonstrate my design in the context of the Battersea Power Station. I felt it was important to keep the pig too. It sort of is the uh, is the hallmark of Battersea Power Station at this point, and it's important to keep the history of it um, as well. So this section demonstrates my vertical theme park with circulation, rides, occupation, and cuts into various wind tunnels that aim to produce sustainable power and uh, reduce the carbon impact this theme park has on the environment and educate um, others. In terms of progression and where I want to take the project, I'd like to explore the human scale experience. One of the attractions, um, I'd like to explore the human scale experience of one of the attractions in uh, detail so I can demonstrate uh, how the space would feel upon entering and exiting the ride space. I would also like to develop these wind tunnels uh, further technically and look at the structural requirements, potential materials and calculations of energy output. And finally look at the connection the tower has to the ground uh, level as I feel um, this isn't as developed as other elements in the project. Thank you for listening. So yeah guys that uh, that is it for uh, this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you um, enjoyed and I hope you learned something. I'm going to probably review these um, sort of at the end of the year or maybe in the next few uh, few days um, based on the tutor's comments and uh, based on how I felt the presentation went but I feel like I cover all bases in my project and I feel like I feel like it's important to explore everything you've gone through in the project and show how your design has developed but also to show those mistakes that you made and don't be afraid to show those mistakes that you've made because if you do show those mistakes it shows that uh, you're developing and you're using your critical mind you're thinking critically about your project uh, anyway that's for another video thank you so much for watching and um, i will see you in the next one thanks and goodbye